Okay, my ceramics class, we are back and um, hopefully you all are getting a lot more comfortable working with clay. In your book, the next picture or uh, project we're going to be working on is making a pitcher, a pouring vessel. So some things to consider for a pouring vessel is it needs to have a spout or a way for liquid to come out. And it, need, it doesn't need to have a handle, but uh, most pitchers do have a handle for pouring. Um, the book kind of talks about two different ways to make a pitcher. There was one way where you can use the slab bowl method and make two um, tops and bottoms and conjoin them. And then we can kind of go in and hollow out the top and put a spout on there. There's also the other way of making a pitcher with a coiled neck. Um, I'm going to kind of do something a little bit different in the sense. I've just started a coil pot right here. Um, and it's, I would say, like really soft leather hard. I can pick it up. It's holds its own shape. It's still got like flex to the clay and stuff. And the whole idea is to understand there is a limitation in terms of how much you can build on top of the previous coils. If these coils are too wet to support the next ones, your piece is gonna collapse and cave in on itself. So make sure that you stop when the clay is too soft, let it dry out for a little bit, then come back at a later point once that clay is at that good leather hard consistency. So. I've just built this through the coiling process. And so down here at the base, I started with smaller coils. And then as I work my way up, I'm using the same thickness of the coil. But what I'm doing is my coils are going on the outside to create more volume. And then I'm slowly bringing them inside so the coils will sort of stack on the interior space. So that'll make a little bit more sense once I start to get in there and show you what we can do. So I'm gonna grab some clay and we can start rolling out some coils. Let me just set this aside. And so coiling is one of the most foundational ways and basic ways to create a variety of forms. Um, so I have a couple coils here. I'm gonna set those aside and bring my pot back in. Um, this is dry enough where I am going to want to get in there and score. I'm using a serrated rib. A metal or plastic fork will work well too. I kind of been dipping my fork into the water. This is another way. And then transferring that water over. And as I scratch and rough up the surface, I'm essentially creating slip. But if you want to go the route using your slip that you've made, you can do that too. There's lots of different ways to um, construct your pieces. So I've scored that thoroughly. Make sure that when you're scoring too that they're like pretty deep gouges that are pretty aggressive. Um, they need to be more than just superficial marks. So then I'm going to take my coil. And so if I wanted to create like more volume on this form, I'm going to put my coil a little bit on the outside rather than directly on top. You can see in this sort of area that it's tapering inward. So what I've been doing is putting my coils on the inside. The more dramatically you move them on the inside, the quicker the form is gonna to wanna to come in. Same goes to be said if you wanted to make your form have more volume, stacking them further on the outside and continuously following that is going to create your form to have more volume. So. I'm actually going to bring this back in so my coils are going to sit not directly on top but a little bit on the inside. And so my thumb is pushing this clay downward on the inside and my index finger is controlling the outside clay coil. And I'm kind of smearing and pushing this clay and giving it a little bit of a turn. I'm working on what's called a turntable or a banding wheel which is making it much easier. But I'm actually going to take that away so you all can kind of see what it is that you will have to do. So then I can get back in here and make sure that this coil is thoroughly attached on the inside and then we'll go ahead and kind of clean up the outside. Now it's up to you if you want to leave those coil marks. I particularly don't like mine um, the way I touch them so I tend to smooth them away but you can do what you want. And then what I can do is go ahead and take my thumb or my index and kind of compress and smooth these coils downward.
So I'm not going to try and make it perfect right now. I'll go back in here and clean this all up a little bit later too. But you can see how that brought it in a little bit more. I can take another coil and do the same thing. And this is where you really have to kind of pay attention to the consistency of your clay. If you're going along and building and you're realizing like, wow, this wall is like really thin or it's just kind of wiggling around on you, it's typically because the clay is too soft and you're not, the clay can't just support that weight that you're building on top of it. So again, I'm using my thumb on the inside to kind of smear and push this clay down a little bit while my fingers on the outside are controlling the outside wall. I think too, one big thing that I've noticed with people, um, and this is just how my hands work, is that often people will work directly in front of them and they'll be pinching. And that typically creates the form to come out because their inside fingers are sort of already angling like outward, right? So that your form comes out really quickly. Try working on the far side. So instead of this side right in front of you, the far side. And now what happens is basically your fingertips are on the outside of the wall and look how they're angled already just because of the, the ergonomics of things, right? So now your form is gonna typically wanna go straight up more or inward. Once it goes out, it's really hard to get it to go straight or back inward. So that's just something I learned from um, my practice and something that works for me. Uh, so just something to think about. Let me get another coil going here. And so when the clay is the right consistency, you're finding that it's really easy to kind of just keep going. But if it's too soft, it's, you're gonna wrestle around with it. When rolling those coils out, try and go all the way from the bottom of your wrists to the tips of your fingers, make full rotations and you don't need to use a lot of pressure. You have to actually just keep your hands rigid, but keep them sensitive in terms of feeling those lumpy spots, feeling the thin spots, and then you'll have a lot more success rolling out even coils. So now I think instead of like bringing it in more, I'm gonna kind of like go straight up. So this coil is a little, um, the neck's really narrow, so I'm gonna go directly on top and just shy a little bit. I'm just gonna take this little piece and get it on in there. And then I can start compressing the inside. And again, I'm working on the far side of the clay wall rather than right in front of me. I will say if you need things to dry out, like in your like, okay, I, I wanna work, but my piece is too wet, Keep it uncovered and stick it out in the sun for like, honestly, five or 10 minutes right now. Um, it's gonna dry out, but please do be careful. If you forget about it and you leave it out there for a half hour or something, it's gonna be totally cooked. The sun um, here in California in the Bay Area is really intense, as you all know, and will dry things out super fast on you. And once it gets dry, it's kind of it. Um, and that's just another, I think, good generalization to understand too is it's always better to keep your pots on the wetter side because that gives you the opportunity to make changes and alter things but if you let your piece dry out fully there's no going back and keep trying to rehydrate it so it's really easy to dry a pot out it's really difficult to try to rehydrate a pot or get it to be um, a workable consistency so now I'm kind of working on smoothing these coils down. You can use your thumb. You can use the back of a spoon works well too. The metal rib works well too. Oh, got some old crusties in there. I'm not gonna do much refining in front of the camera, um, but I just wanna give you the idea of what you can do. A little bit of water, again, on your metal rib can really help to smooth things. And everything's gonna be progressive. It's not gonna look pretty all the time. Um, I think in one video I was saying like, that was one thing I really struggled with was like, I wanted everything to be really like neat and smooth and just perfect. Um, 
and I would just like wrestle around with the clay and it took me a long time to kind of figure out letting it be what it is and coming back to it when it's the right consistency is going to allow you to be a lot more successful. So you can decide on how tall you want to go. I'm not going to go any taller. I'm going to stop there. And then what I have are some templates because we need to make a spout. Um, and I've just folded some pieces of paper in half and then I took a pair of scissors and went along and kind of cut out some shapes and then reopened them. And so I have like this potential spout shape, right? Something like that, it's a little bit wide. Um, it doesn't have to have this sharp geometric V shape to it. It can be something a little bit softer, but it's up to you. But this will kind of give you a, kind of an idea, which that kind of looks pretty good in my mind, but let's look at some others. This one's even a little bit broader. Well, that might be too wide in my book. It can be lower, it can be anywhere. This one's more of like a beak. So this one can kind of be like sticking out here if you wanted to. Um, so this is one way you can work. So what you can do then is let's set that aside. And so the whole idea too is to take these techniques and apply them in any way that you want. Like um, be creative. You don't have to make a spout this way. I can show you another way, but I'm just gonna kind of pound this out. Another thing you can do is what's called, instead of rolling a slab, it's called flinging or tossing a slab. Um, and the idea is taking some clay, compressing it downward, and what I'm gonna be doing is kind of throwing it on the table. Um, and so the idea is if your far end hits the table first, this end will hit second, and it'll slowly elongate and stretch. If I keep going in the same way, it's just going to get longer in one direction. So if you turn it the opposite direction, it'll start to stretch out the other way. The whole key is to have the far end, this end, hit the table first, and then it'll slowly start to stretch. It definitely takes some practice, but it's just something else that you can do. There we go. All right, so I have my slab, but you can kind of see all of these stretch marks on there. You can leave them if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and erase them. I'm gonna take my metal or wooden lid with a little bit of water on there. And I can go ahead and kind of really quickly compress those stretch marks away. Do it to both sides. So, I think my spout fell. So this is what I'm going to use as my template. And then I can go ahead and cut these out. And if you want to just go ahead and try and freeform one, be my guest. This is just another way of working. So then I can bring my pot back. sort of start playing around. It can be having a tighter shape, something like that. It can be up lower. I think that that's kind of interesting to me. So I'm just gonna kind of like gently hold it there. I'm not gonna connect anything and I'm gonna come back and kind of take a look at it and that looks pretty good. So now you have a couple more options. Let's just say I wanted to go, let's just, let's go with it, all right? Take this off. I'm gonna score the areas. You can kind of take your needle tool maybe and sort of outline where the area is gonna be attached, meaning the uh, spout to the actual pot. I'm gonna go ahead and get it on there. Your book's doing it a little bit differently, but this is just another way you can do things. I'm gonna kind of work on compressing things in there. I can sculpt things a little bit. I think I'm gonna leave this sort of 
variation of heights between here and here. I kind of like the way that looks. If you want, you can totally go ahead and blend and smooth it all down. So now you have this sort of wall right here, right? You can do a couple things. Well, the first thing you can do is just simply get in there, cut it all out, right? So you have a way for the liquid to flow out nice and smoothly. You can also keep this top portion and cut out like um, a little arch. So there's like a bridge up here. Um, so let me kind of show you that first and then we can kind of show you the other thing. So I'm just taking a little knife and getting in here. You might have to wait too. My clay's a little soft to be doing this, but it'll work. So I've removed that clay in there and you're going to want to make this a lot nicer but you then can once you take that big chunk out you can see how the liquid will flow nice and smooth. I'm not particularly into that for this shape so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove all of this right in here. I'm just going to kind of rough things out kind of just hog out a lot of area and then I can get back in there and kind of get the things a lot neater. So this is kind of what we have. I can go ahead and start smoothing and blending this because you do want the water or whatever it is you're pouring out of your pitcher to be able to flow nicely and smoothly. If you need to, you can add and like kind of score a little bit too much over there. I can add some clay and smooth things away. And then you can start fussing with things. And if you're realizing like, hey, I'm messing stuff up, it's probably because it's too wet. So it's letting some things stiffen up and letting things dry. So what I'm gonna do is let it stiffen up a little bit. I can think about mapping out where my handle's gonna be. Um, just one other thing you can do for handles is I have this slab here. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of stretch this out a little bit more. So we had you all work on some handles before and they're not required in the assignments, but there were just some ideas to get you all going. But another thing you can do is what's called like a hollow handle. I'm not sure if this will be big enough. Maybe go over here. Kind of roll gently. You can't see, can you? Let's back it up. And roll these sides over on itself to kind of make a uh, hollow, hollow cylinder. I will need to score my surfaces. I think that'll go on top there, so I'll do this. And slowly pinching them in, kind of like if you're, I don't know, making dumplings or something. I'm not too worried about like these little fractures that are happening on the surface. I can go ahead and kind of deal with those later. But then I can kind of get in here and they have kind of like this shape of a handle. Or you can do like the handles the other way. Um, like that kind of works pretty good in my mind. I'm gonna go ahead and start compressing it on there. And you'll notice that I didn't slip and score, but the amount of compression I'm going to be applying to the handle and the form, it, it's going to stay. And I think that's kind of like a, a decent shape. I kind of like this sharp angle. Well, I'm trying to get things all lined up so the handle's directly behind the spout and I am a little cockeyed. kind of snugging this up and the nice thing about like hand-built stuff is that 
just has this more organic feel to things. And the last thing you can do, what I can show you, is what's called backfilling. And so you can see that there's like this negative space here, and it's kind of like a little, just a little uneven there, and that's kind of bothering me. But I can take some clay, a coil, and I can gently get it on there. And I can start smoothing and creating a base or a joint to the handle that is a little bit more substantial that's going to connect to the neck. You can do the top portion. And these aren't in your book. These are just some other things that you can do. You can do this bottom portion. I think I need a little bit more up on the top. But this is where I think clay is like really um, intuitive that you can kind of just fill it in and add it and sculpt and manipulate and just fuss as much as you want. With a little bit of water on my finger, I can get back in here and kind of smooth things down. I like the bottom how it's looking but you know it's up to you and you have like kind of like your picture you can tweak things a little bit I kind of like it out a little bit more but that's sort of the general idea so try some things out remember to be patient take your time if you're wrestling with the clay take a break let it dry um, and just have some fun all right, we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.